Hello there, I'm Dave Allen, I'm good and geeky, and this is Techno Gran. <laughs> Say hello, Techno Gran. Hi, Techno. <laughs> this is my mum, and I call her Techno Gran because she liked getting stuff from uh, Apple. I've, uh, occasionally I get a phone call saying, hey, David, just get, I've, I've been and bought something, guess what? <laughs> and it's a new iPad or a new iPhone or something like that, you know? <laughs> Anyway, let's get down to the technology video and let's have a look at something to do with Affinity Designer. Hello there, I'm Dave Allen. I'm Good and Geeky and we're in Affinity Designer. And we're going to have a look at how to make some grids and also have a look at the alignment tools we've got in there. Let's have a look and see what we've got. Okay, so here we are in Affinity Designer and I've got a page ready with some guidelines in there. And the reason I put guidelines on there is because when you're making this grid, it's easier to get the, if you want a specific shape that's the same height and same width, then it's easier to do it with a grid there or with guidelines to help you with it. So let's use this tool that'll give us some diamond shapes. So I'm going to drag down with the mouse from this top corner down to this bottom right hand corner and I'll give me the shape I'm looking for. While I'm still holding down the button on the mouse I'm going to press the right arrow key and that will give me duplicates of that shape going across the canvas. Just let go of the mouse key when I'm finished and the job will be done. So if you want to make this a repeating pattern which comes down as well as going across then we can do a power duplicate. So for that I'm going to do command J. That's put another row of those diamonds underneath and then all I have to do is to bring that down. So I'm going to bring that down with the shift key held so that they align properly vertically and bring it so that it matches there. Look, let go of the mouse and I've got that done. Now to do more of the same all I need to do is to do command J and it fills up the pattern for us and it doesn't have to be with just diamonds you can do with other shapes as well so let's just uh, go back into this here say we were doing circles or ellipses and we're starting from here and I'm going to cross to there to the corner and then I'm going to press the uh, right arrow and get as many of those as I want and I can do that okay so that's cool what about if I want to have a space in between each of these well what I can do with this is I can say that so I want to have Let's see, let's select those first of all. Then I want to go up to the tool here for alignment and I'm going to distribute them. Now I don't want to auto distribute. What I want is I want a particular space in between. So if I need a space in between of say five pixels, that's going to be five pixels in between each of them. And if I want to have 70 pixels in there, I just put 70 in there and that gives me the 70, okay? So that's a quick and easy way to do that. And then to bring this down so I have a gap in between of this here, then what I need to do is I need to do the command J to copy that and then bring this down here. Just hold down the shift key to keep them lined up vertically. And it's a bit difficult to get the amount that you want on here because um, there isn't anywhere I can see where that measurement is coming up that I need. Okay, but what I can do with this is I can put that down to approximately correct. Well, that's a bit bigger there than it is there, but um, we can work on that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select that and then select that. And then I'm going to go up to the Align Tools. And in the Align Tools, we're going to go for the vertical alignments or space vertically. And in this one here, we don't want auto distribute. We want to have 17 there as well. So let's change that to 70. So let's put that down at 70. And as you see, it's brought that down a little bit further. Now all I need to do with this here is to select those ones there and then select this one here last, go back up to the Align tool and then do the uh, line to the bottom. So now I've got the 70 between here and I've got 70 between here. Okay, it's time to do the good and geeky thing and put a like or a comment onto this video because it helps the algorithm, helps people find these videos, these tutorials, so everyone can enjoy them. Go and do it now. So let's have a look at a different way to create this pattern. Take this here and we'll make a copy of this. Do Command J. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring it down here and drop it in there. Now what I want to do is I want to change this uh, Y thing here and I want to do it so that it is plus 70. So I just write a plus in there and then 70 and that moves down 70. Now that was just a little bit easier than the first way of doing it. So that's kind of handy. So it's something to remember. If I go back into this now and do the horizontal and vertical at the same time in this alignment tools, then let's see what we get. So let's do this one here. And that's kind of gone a bit weird. Let's get rid of the auto distribute on there. I still don't know quite what's going on there because we've got 
weird sort of things happening here, haven't we? Two here, and we've got splits in there. It's 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 hard to know what's going on with that, isn't it? So, so alignment tool instead of auto distribute, let's go for this here where we got this thing where we can move it in and out. We can also put a um, vertical alignment on there. Now that's just messed it up all, all together, hasn't it? The auto distribute hasn't put a uh, same gap in between there as it put into here. Um, but as if we go in to take this auto distribute off, <laughs> if we're game, we've got something weird going on, haven't we? Okay, so the guides are gone. Now if I want to do it so that I've got squares in there, and I want to have an actual square and not a rectangle, then what I need to do to get the square is to hold down the shift key, and I need to use the shift key which is near to the arrow keys. So I've got the size that I want there, and it's going to be a square, and it's 220 by 220, and then I'll do this with the right arrow key. Let go of the mouse first, and then let go of the shift key, and each of these should be exactly the same size. And it is, let's get the transform, let's have a look at the transform, 220 by 220. If I want to put gaps in between this here, what I can do, back in, go back into this again, and then do the... Auto distribute, no, we don't want that. And we want to say it's going to be, say, 50 pixels in between. Okay, so you've got uh, this tool over here for alignments, and you've got more things going on here with the uh, left, center, and right, and then the space horizontally, and then same with the verticals, okay? Uh, but also what we can do with this here is we can do the same sort of thing here in this lot of toolbar menu items. Okay, so with this one here, what I could do with this here is if I want to have, let's say this one's down here, for instance. These two selected, and then I want to put them to the left. I've got a, a line left button on there, which makes it really quick and easy to do. Uh, let's uh, just uh, group those together. And now let's do the align middle. Okay, so you see how that aligned to the middle in between those ones there. Cool. Now then, other ways to do some alignments. Okay, so let's uh, get to... Um, one of these items selected and I'm going to turn on the alignment handles. What we might want to do with this is we might want to align the middle of this item here with the edge of this two here. So what we can do with this here, we can grab this handle, bring it across here, drag it so we get it to on that spot there. And I've got the green line which shows me that I'm lined up with the right hand side of those two squares. Let go of the mouse and it's aligned perfectly. The centre of that is aligned perfectly with this right hand edge. So that works with the middle ones there. So the middle one there. So lining up with the uh, the middle of that one there. Look, or I can take one of these ends here. So this end here. So if I want it to line up with the bottom one of this one here, bring that down. I've got my red line. So this is actually lined up properly there. Let go of the mouse, and it's in where exactly where I want it to be, which is lined up on this line here. Move it this way. So going out, go out perpendicular to that object. And I want it to line up with that corner there. Let go, and that's where I've got it there, look. And I can do the same with the middles as well. And I want it to line up with this bottom right-hand corner of this. So you've got a number of ways that you can do some alignments there using that. Uh, this transform tool, by the way, there's other things we can do with it. So we can do a, um, a shearing of the object. So that shears the object that way and that way. And we've got rotation on there as well, so rotate it around there as well. Um, that's rota rotating around the centre. Let's put that down to the bottom corner there. Let's just try the rotation again. And this time the rotation is working on that bottom right-hand corner of that uh, rectangle, which we've uh, sheared and made it more of a sort of diamond shape. Also what you can do is you can go up to this here as well and turn on the uh, Enable Transform Origin. So let's put the Transform Origin there. So it doesn't have to be on any of these corners or in the middle of this here. I can put this over here in the centre, towards the centre of the uh, document. Let's put it right in the centre of the document. So put it right in the centre of the document there. Then what I can do is I can start rotating it. And when I rotate it, it rotates around that centre. So let's put it there, for instance. Let's do a Command J. I've made a copy. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this here and I'll bring it around here. Or oh, say about that much and let go. And then all I've got to do is do the Command J again. And I can make a nice pattern sort of going around there and so on. Okay, so you can make some nice, weird and wonderful patterns with that there. This time I'm going to uh, move it round. I'm going to make it a wee bit smaller that way. 
and also let's change color of it. So this might not do anything, but let's try it anyway. Let's uh, see what happens. Change it more for sort of an orange one there. And let's do the Command J again. The curl is staying the same, but you can, as you see, it's getting smaller each time, as well as following the curve around. So that could be a nice little thing to get some sort of uh, design going, if that's what you, that's the sort of shape you're looking for in your design. Okay, so uh, this is Dave Allen talking to you about using the alignment tools in Affinity Designer 2. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Bye-bye now.